So a couple of months ago I made a video about an SAE Mark VI tuner that I've been looking for for quite some time due to its unique combination of a Nixie tube digital tuner and an oscilloscope display. And it was that oscilloscope that really captured people's imaginations. In fact, a good proportion of the comments received on that video were from people wanting me to try out some of the oscilloscope demos on that display. That was the people that weren't correcting me and telling me it's not an oscilloscope, it's actually a vector scope, which is apparently a very important distinction. Anyway, I put information in the video description about these oscilloscope demos and reported back on how they'd worked out for me. And I'd also got links in there to them if you wanted to try them for yourself. Uh, on my display, they hadn't really worked out too well. You see, this display is a little bit out of focus. It is old. It's very, very small as well, and I can't quite get the things to centre properly on it, so it's not ideal for playing these back. So, let's go ahead and get a proper oscilloscope to try these out. Now, ideally, I'd already have an oscilloscope lying around that I could just try these out on. They should work on any oscilloscope with an XY display, or vector scope, if you want to call them that. Regardless, I don't have one. So I had to go and get one. I thought, well, why don't I get an oscilloscope that I actually wanted anyway, which is a, a Tektronix 760A. Now, the reason I wanted this particular model, it's a, an old thing, I think it's from the 80s. It's a CRT display, which displays these demos better than the more modern ones, or they suit it anyway. But the reason I like the 760A is because it's designed for audio, which is more what I'm into. I'm not sort of messing around in the lab with things. I just wanted to play some audio through it. So after much hunting and looking at the price, Prices, which are extraordinarily high for these, I managed to find an old one, but just the insides of it. So whilst that was being delivered, I bought a broken oscilloscope from the same model range in the UK, which didn't cost hardly anything, just for the outside case. Now I did switch that on just to see if it was working, and it made a big bang and lots of smoke came out of it, so definitely not. In the meantime, the internals of the 760A arrived from the US in a rather sorry state. Now, I did buy this at quite a cheap price, but it wasn't broken when they sent it. Somewhere along the lines during the delivery process, someone's given this a good knock and managed to crack the front of it. However, one thing I didn't notice when I bought it was the screen was all scratched up as well. It looks like someone's tried to clean that with some sort of abrasive cleaner. Fortunately, I've still got the spare one, the first one I bought just for the case, and hopefully some of the components from that can be used to repair the SEB 60A. And at the end of it, I'll have one good oscilloscope. And it turns out that is the case. Tektronix did make a lot of interchangeable components on their oscilloscopes, and most of these things were available as spares in the back of the manual. So once you take the front off that, I can get this bit of tinted plastic out of there, take the same two screws out of that one, which is only too happy to fall apart, and swap out the nasty scratched up piece of plastic with this nice clear one. Obviously give that a nice polish as well after. But it goes in the same surround. Unfortunately, you can also take out the base of that surround, the metal plate, which surrounds five buttons in the first oscilloscope with this one, which surrounds two knobs on the 760A. So the whole thing just assembles again with those two screws. I didn't bother using the scale in this because I don't need it. It obscures the image and also it didn't fit particularly easily as well. So I could put that to one side. The other thing I had to do was to adjust to jumpers on the circuit board. In the manual it tells you how to do this to change it from its original mode into a standard XY orientation, which is needed for these demos. So it's just a matter of moving two jumpers on there, as well as I had to swap a couple of wires around so that things didn't display upside down. But I can put the new repaired 760A in the case that I'd originally bought, and it looks almost, I'd say, as good as new. Now, around the back of the 760A, the inputs on there are XLR sockets. Normally, an oscilloscope would use BNC plugs, but because this one's for audio applications, it uses XLR. So I needed to get a lead which would convert RCA to XLR. But with that in place, I'm then able to plug in the left and right inputs of this into the left and right outputs of any audio device I choose. So that's what the display looks like with normal music, but we're here to see what it looks like playing back some of the music and sounds created specifically for displaying on an oscilloscope. Now, there are a number of different demos available, but it appears that the most prolific creator of oscilloscope music is an artist called Jero Beam Fenderson. So we're going to take a look at some of his work here. Now, if you want to see more of this, there are links to his website in the video description. Yeah. <laughs> 
So all the images you've seen there are being created purely with sound. Now you don't have to go to the trouble of buying an oscilloscope to see these. I've only played just short snippets of a few of the tracks that are on the album. You can buy the whole album from the link in the video description. And if you do that, which I believe costs five euros, I think it says there, you also get a video file of all the tracks being played on an oscilloscope and that's being recorded at 1080p at 60 frames a second. And you might find that those files are the best way to play back the video because if you don't have a setup that can support 192 kilohertz playback through your audio device you might find that you get the odd glitch on screen on my setup i was playing it back through a lossless audio device but obviously the interface doesn't go up to 192 kilohertz and you can see we've got a few breakups here on the bicycle and some double lines on the scenery in the background if you play back the video files that you get when you download the album you can see that those are rock solid the bicycles being drawn properly and there's no double lines either on the scenery. And another alternative is to get an oscilloscope emulator. There's one that's available online, no cost at all, for Windows, Mac OS or Linux. And it does a really good job of emulating an old CRT vector oscilloscope display. I'll show you what happens here. If you load in an audio file into it, it's designed really specifically just for playing these audio uh, tracks with an oscilloscope display. You can see here this looks really good on screen. I've got a video capture which is slowing it down a little bit but you can adjust the width of the lines and you can also change the color of the lines and that's a really good way to play back any audio demo that's designed for oscilloscopes at no cost and then finally you can also go on Jeremy Fenderson's YouTube page and I'll have links to that in the video description as well so there's going to be a lot of links in the video description so you can go from pretty expensive to start with your own oscilloscope to completely free and just using the online tools and if you want more advice and help then there's another link up there to the Reddit page for oscilloscope music so i hope you've enjoyed your look here today at the world of oscilloscope music and demos it's only been a little bit of a brief dip into it though if you really want to learn more of course visit those links in the video description and those will take you a lot deeper but that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching Oh, this chap's just too old to be on YouTube. If you want to know about technology, ask a young person. Let me find some other channel I can watch instead. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Zach here. Today, we're going to drop some more science. You're in science with Zach. Okay, today I found this silver disc. It was by the side of the road. And we're gonna see if the silver disc can play on this vinyls player. Silver disc versus vinyls. Let's give it a go. 
Don't forget to subscribe. Hey, it's moving. It's going on the disc. Oh, no, it isn't. It's come back to the beginning. Silver disc fail. That's dropping science. Oh, I nearly forgot. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. And thumbs up. And remember, you can find me on Snapchat, Instagram, MySpace. Uh, visit my website on GeoCities. <laughs> Zach out of here. Woo! You see, now there's a guy that knows what's going on. And he doesn't need to have stupid and funny comedy segments at the end of the video.